Hello and welcome back to McClutchy Maths. My name is Natalie McClutchy and today we're continuing our series on time series. It's a complex question from a past exam in Western Australia. We're aiming this particular video at students in Queensland, Western Australia and Tasmania. Thanks for joining us if you are new to the channel. Now I've modified this question slightly. It comes from 2018, the Maths Applications Calculator exam in Western Australia. A service manager has recorded the number of customers over time periods T and they've produced a spreadsheet to compare different types of moving averages. Now let's have a quick look at the information. We've got customers, a three point moving average, a four point centered moving average, a five point moving average and a six point centered moving average. Lots of different moving averages going on there. Now I do go into a lot more detail in a couple of videos back talking about how to smooth data. That's the one you want to watch to find out how to calculate different types of moving averages. We've also got some missing information here, A, B and C. So no doubt we're going to have to find A, B and C shortly. But the first part asks us what's the purpose of calculating a moving average for time series data. So this is where you need to be able to explain and give a short brief explanation about why we do this in the first place. So you need to have a bit of an understanding and I do talk about that in previous videos. But to answer this, the Western Australia solution was to either smooth the time series or to be able to identify a trend and any combination of those two would have been an acceptable answer. So you could explain in there how the smoothing process takes out the impact of irregular fluctuations, um, it helps you to identify overall trends over a longer period of time either of those answers would have been quite suitable. You wouldn't have had to write a great big long story about it, just a simple explanation. And it's always a good idea to have a look and see how many marks are allocated and how much space is provided. And that gives you an indication of how much to write there. Part B wants us to find the values of A, B and C. So I've highlighted A down the bottom there. It's the number of customers. Now you might be thinking, well, how would I know how many customers there were? Well, We've got a three point moving average that's been calculated with the three pieces of data for um, time period 14, 15 and 16. So we can work backwards to find the missing piece of data. So that's those three pieces of information there. They've given us that moving average of 838. So let's work backwards by writing our formula firstly, substituting the information we have into the formula and then slowing it down and working out what the sum of 864 and 834 are. We're now going to multiply both sides of the equation by 3 and then we're going to work out that A is equal to 816. Now we would expect it to be in the 800 so if you've got something like a negative number or a fraction or 200 that would not make a whole lot of sense. So you're looking for something that's similar to the data that it's around. Now we need to find B. It's a five point moving average. Now my first instinct was to take the column exactly to the left and work out what the five points around that point were. But you need to be reading your columns very carefully because we actually need these five numbers here from the number of customers column, not the previous column, which is also moving averages. So be careful not to do the wrong thing there. So once again, we write the formula, we substitute the information into the formula and then we work that out to the end and our sales value is 880.8. It's important that you do write your formula and that you do show the steps involved and work it out slowly. You don't know where marks are going to be allocated, so don't skip any steps. Our last one is to work out the six point centered moving average. Now in my previous videos, we looked at four point centered moving averages. So this will be interesting to see where we go with a 6.1. Well, you would recall from the previous video that it's an average of an average. So firstly, we need to find this average here for the first six customers, and then um, we need to find the next one down. So let's work on this one first. We've got those six numbers. If we work out the average, that's gonna be 882. Then we need to find the next six numbers. So if we find that second moving average, same process again, a little bit tedious. It's 895. Now those two averages that we worked out, we need to take an average of those two to center the moving average. So we're gonna take the average of the first six um, um, point moving average and then the second six point moving average. So that's 882 plus 895 divided by two. 
and that gives us a centered value of 888.5. Now there are some other ways that you can work this out and if you look up the West Australia Mass Application Calculator exam for 2018, you'll find that they've used a slightly different method to work that out and it recognizes that the um, certain numbers in the middle, 2, 3, 4 and 5 are used twice. So there is a shortcut to do that, but I'm not going to take you through the shortcut today. Have a look at that yourself if you like a good shortcut. But this is the way to do it um, if you want to ensure that you don't make any calculation mistakes. Well, once again, we've come to the end of our video. Fantastic stuff. And I've got some more complex questions coming up using past exams. So do be sure to hit that notifications button so that you'll know when I'm showing that. And if you don't like YouTube telling you things and telling you when there's new videos available and it gets annoying to you, you can just follow us on Facebook. I often put a Friday funny on there or some interesting fun facts. So that's something that you may want to look out for as well. Thank you so much for joining me here at McClutchy Maths. It's been great having you.